I'm Nigel Harrison, um, and I'm uh, Education Inclusion Manager with Martin Morty Somerset. I manage Chris, and I manage six other managers as well. Um, the uh, spe uh, Special Education Needs Team, so the uh, team that the state is Educational Psychology Service, a Learning Support Service, and what we call Children's Missing Education Service, which is the Old Education Welfare uh, Service as well. So I manage the inclusion aspects of the uh, local authority. I know Joan would like to see Chris and I join up a bit more, and I think hopefully through this you'll start seeing those things, because one of the first things I did when I uh, started the authority was that Chris was on a temporary contract, so I immediately put Chris onto a permanent contract. That's the first thing I did, and she's not doing too bad so far. Okay? And we've had really good conversations about things, because what, what Chris was tasked to do with, uh, it, it, to start with is develop an, uh, an inclusion quality model. We have really good conversations about what that should look like, how we should approach it. And Chris undersells herself in lots of ways. The coming up of the Senko conference bit, the government said, we're putting this out, you know, anybody can bid for these things. We had a conversation about the Senkos and how we didn't want them to just go into a university and do the theoretical bits, that we actually wanted the practitioner bits to be there as well. So Chris and I went out to meet with Barspar University and agreed that, that we would pursue that together. And Chris actually has included the other local authorities in that. Now, whilst you could actually say, well, this is between us and Bath's bar, Chris has just been absolutely open with other authorities. <coughs> they do work well with other authorities, and they really are engaged with it. And I think that's a mark of, of the values you have about it's what's good for Senkos and what's good for kids, rather than what's good, you know, for me and my ego, if you like. I'm really, uh, really chuffed about the way that's going. So you do understand yourself a bit. There we go. So anyway, part of the thing I've been looking at is my influence. As you go through life, you tend to get promotions and things think it's a good idea. And I've been getting further and work further away from children and young people. And I used to, I think, be very good working with children and young people and families and so on as a teacher, as an educational psychologist. But I've moved further and further away. So how do I, as a manager and a leader within a local authority, actually have any influence now on the child and family and the outcome of the children and family? Because I don't actually see them very often. I don't talk to them very often. I do the management. So the idea is that I'm four, four steps or five steps away from the child. How do I actually do this? Well, I have to work through people like Chris and my managers. I have to work through their teams have to work with teachers and support workers in school who then work with children and families. So something I do seems to be actually you can get watered down. But the whole point of me being in this career is actually I want to do something for children and young people. So what is, you know, it's actually having an influence. So I'm not claiming to have any cause and effect on things. I have an influence on things. And what's in my toolbox as a, as a manager well, we have the strategic planning resources that I've got there. So I've got a budget of around one and a half million pounds in terms of the team and in terms of the budget for special educational needs for special schools and our authority placements. It's getting off about 20 million pounds that we can employ within a, a reasonable way. So I can direct resources into certain areas um, so we can invest time and money into the SENCO conferences, the IQM, those sorts of things as well. Um, I can write policy, which I can do dead easy now. I can write policy whether well, anybody takes any notice of it is another thing, but I can put it on my web and say we've got one. So we can, we can do that. And I can write guidance for people and say this is how we interpret the policy, this is what I'd like you to do. Again, I don't really know. I, you know most of it feels as though it's going in the right direction, but I don't know if everybody's actually sticking to the guidance. Uh, and I only know when something goes wrong and there's a complaint that nobody's done what they should have been. But it's also this bit about me and the way I lead and the way I behave within my team. And that's the bit that I'm trying to, to look at because all these other stuff is, is easy in some ways, but it's, um, it's not as important as what I do. In the context, I'm not showing you anything you haven't seen before, but the context of in education in a country which is affecting education is really unsettled. Yeah, I'm sure we get through it, but it's really unsettled. 
I started to write this uh, paper for the conference, this was the day that I started to write, and you think, the sort of things that were going on from there, the stock market had actually crashed throughout August and gone down something like 15%. Um, you know, the markets were in the top, to market. you can actually see this is, is a really difficult time. The impact on education is my budgets have been cut. I've had to save about 20% of my budget. I've lost about 15% of staff. Uh, the staff have gone through natural wastage, if that's a good term, but they've gone, apart from 1.4 1, 1 people we had to make redundant. But I've really tried to keep people in post, really saying this is what we're about. And I think people do understand that I'm really cutting non-staffing non budgets as much as I can. But it's very unsettled times in education. Um, we've actually got some changes in strategic planning, so the whole authority is now moving from five departments down to three. Children's services is not going to exist, it's going to be people and communities. So just by doing that, the emphasis moves off, you know, the, the spotlight moves off the children, if you like, in, in my, my mind, because actually I've got to you know, fight my corner amongst more people for those things. We've got economic problems, the authority is still looking for more money. 2012-13 uh, looks like it's going to be the worst year, um, so what we've done already is not going to happen. Change in policies is really having quite a big impact on us, the academies issue. Um, I was reading the paper there, something like 40% of secondary schools now have become academies in the authority, in, 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 the, in the country. Um, over that, and, and the aim is, the authority is saying we want all our secondary schools to become academies. That's taking money out of the system, so money for education welfare, uh, for secondary schools, we've, we've lost it, it's gone into the schools, um, and they're not buying our services back. So I'm having to, to, to swap and change and go back to the policy and guidance and all those things as a manager. Um, we get changes in guidance, things like exclusions guidance, you've probably heard, you know, power to search more, uh, physical restraint, all those things are, are happening. But there's something that's a fairly constant here, and I do struggle because it makes me, you know, some of these things make me boil a bit, and I do think what my values are. But I generally stay the same. My values have changed over the years, and they've got more and more consolidated. Um, but I generally stay, stay the same, and I can have the influence on my behavior. I can't, I can't make people do things, but I can influence myself. When I started looking at the um, PhD, um, and coming out of a master's at UWE in leadership and management in uh, public uh, organizations. Um, I had this idea of this learning organization from, I can't remember what was his name, Aguirre's, is it? Aguirre's? Anyway. A uh, learning organization. If you actually can put in some uh, structures, then the organized individuals will learn and learn how to learn. And so you end up with something that's quite sustainable within the organization what I wanted to be able to do. That was before, so I wanted to transform the organization before um, we were being transformed anyway, because we had no choice, because the budget cuts were coming in and everything else. So I thought, well, I could actually stop this PhD and wait for something to settle down, and then I can do it again. But actually, this is a really good time for doing the, the PhD and doing the research, because it is transformative times. And how do I lead in those sort of transformative so taking those ideas, even though we've had budget cuts, we have maintained the budget for training for people. And we are, um, Chris is now managing the training aspect of that in terms of the budget and making sure it's fair and so on there. But we do invest as a, a subgroup of the local authority in people, um, not just in terms of training, but actually in terms of time we're giving people, the coaching we're giving people, the conversations we have with people. And that's really important for me, part of the learning organization, that people feel value, that they are invested in, and they are invested in terms of helping them learn. Focus is on improving practice, so we don't talk about blame, we talk about, you know, we can have those sort of things around, it's another opportunity to learn, you know. Well, actually, it's annoying, some of these things, but we don't actually go back and say, you've got it wrong. We take it as, a, as the organization just hasn't got this right yet. Um, and uh, this is, it's just a new way of being, really. I'm trying to change the culture to, to people actually feeling quite settled in themselves and feeling valued and so on. 
it's values based, and we talk about our values quite openly there. I mean, I, I don't see why we shouldn't in some ways, because we're an inclusion service, and inclusion is a value, and we ought to be talking about it all the time, how inclusive we are, and even making jokes about when we're not inclusive. You know, so it's actually just raising it as actually it's a jokey thing, but we need to watch ourselves a little bit more. And the focus of the organization on the moral purpose, which is about trying to prevent educational failure for vulnerable youngsters, uh, whether they're excluded from school, whether they're special educational needs, whether they're black, uh, green, whatever, you know, that's, that's what we're about. And that goes down to everybody in the organization, including, you know, the admin staff and everybody is part of that. Now, when I've, I've been looking at well, how, am I, how am I managing this learning organization, um, and it's looking at the action research cycle here. Now, it could be that we've, I've put in a project. If you see the learning organization as a project, I've put in a project, I can plan it, act on it, reflect, change it, um, etc. So we can go through that. But you've got to imagine that this is actually going through time as well. It's, it's, you know, as, when I put this in a couple of years ago, times were different. It's going through time, so there's effects on it. So, in some ways, you can imagine that this is being bombarded from outside by all sorts of different influences, not just my influence, but finance, people coming, people going, people retiring, new managers, all those things are affecting the way this is happening. This is my, my, my thing here. Right? So in developing the organization, as Chris mentioned about the sort of, I've seen this as a macro level thing, as an action research project in its own right, if you wanted to do that, I've given people explicit permissions to take what I'm calling calculated risks, in the sense that I don't want to just you know, blindly take risks, but actually, you can take a risk here. Why don't you do that? What's stopping you from doing these things? You know, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? Is that, is that going to be too bad that we can't stand it? So those sorts of things are there. Putting a lot more emphasis down to the managers and then into their teams to actually take leadership you know, this is your job, you, you, you get on and do it. Don't keep referring back to me and checking out that this is okay to do. Providing spaces for collaborative learning um, through Conversation Cafe, but also in team meetings. Um, for example, one of the things that um, uh, we were talking about earlier is that we have a problem with SEN about tribunals. We have something like 10 tribunals on the go at the moment, and we had none last year. And we've made an effort to have none, and all of a sudden we've got this huge mountain of tribunals. When you look at them, there are a lot of them around ABA, which is uh, um, Applied Behavioral Analysis, sort of younger interventions for, uh, sort of interventions for younger autistic uh, children. So we're looking at as a team, thinking what is our stand on this? How do we actually um, you know, make decisions about these things? So we're going back and looking as a team about how we, how we do those things. Developing people, coaching, training, mentoring. I think that happens, it's not as though we have a, um, a coaching session, but we're coaching all the time. It happens as part of what we, what we do. And encouraging people and holding them, and I talk to so in complexity, but it's basically out of their comfort zone. You push somebody out of their comfort zone, and psychologically they need to be held there a little bit, otherwise they want to come back in again or they feel that they're going to go off into chaos. You say, no, no, it's okay, you can, you can be there. So, let's go back to the cycle again. I mean, it's being bombarded, I'm trying to point on here, it's not showing on your screen, is it? Um, it's being bombarded. But I'm also trying to bombard it here as a leader, so my influence as a leader. So I'm trying to influence what's going on in that cycle. Okay, so I'm working, right, that's good. I'm working with several people, and one of them is Sandra, my PA, who's absolutely brilliant in what she does. Um, she does actually, you know, well, I, I don't do that and, you know, can't do it. So I push her, I push her. She knows I'm doing it, so I'm pushing her into things. And one of the things, um, we had a conference uh, planning meeting, and I didn't need to be there, because this was about the administration thing. But no, I had to be there. So I said, no, I'm not going to be there. You're going to do it for me. That's what you do. You're my assistant. You work on my behalf. Right, OK. And she was working with pediatricians and psychiatrists and people coming on. And how could I, as a little administrator, um, manage this? 
she went to that meeting and she came out and she was floating on air. You could almost see it. She was floating on air. And she came back and she said, I did it, I did it. And they listened to me. And, and, and it was fantastic. And I've just got a little clip of her, um, if it works. It did last time. Yes, I that was it, and I, I think that was. Oh. I think that was quite a defining moment when I stood up and I walked out there, I walked through the door, and I just felt really. I can't describe it. I just walked down through the office. I just felt inwardly as though I was really from ear to ear. Like, like some, I don't know, I can't, I just walked down through, head held down, and I thought, what was I worried about? I could do that, and it's not a problem. The next thing to be sorted out is... So that's... So that was a sort of effect that I'm trying to have on people, if you like. And the whole thing for me is it's the confidence that Sandra will build up to go to the next meeting, and to keep on going to, to, to this thing is really, really important there. So you then start looking, sorry, I'm going to fix around next one. So, it's got the capital L, capital T. <laughs> but this is, this is what I'm, I'm looking at in some ways, is this is what I'm trying to look at in me and my influence on these things. So planning to observe my practice and influence others, acting on that, observing myself, and trying to capture the data. You know, what's driving me? What, what, uh, where does it come from, etc. So there's that bit there. And then what was my part in this? Okay, let's see if I can. And also, nature, though, so you're, you know, your influence as well. I think it's you sort of recognizing that in Sandra as well, and giving her that um, freedom, that space, to be to, to, uh, being asked to go to that meeting. You know, many sort of managers would, would not have allowed that to happen, mm -hmm. would they? You know, but you do, like, you do, you recognize those qualities, and you let the bird fly, you know, you don't know what the consequences are going to be. You didn't know what the consequences of Sandra being at that meeting, no. not speak possibly, no, but really the <laughs> Yes, yes. But you, 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 you know, you allow that to happen, you know, to give yourself space. Another thing for me from us, I guess, with Lois, I mean, I thought that was a wonderful compliment at the end. You know, and she said, well, you're here anyway, mm. you know, and it's like, and I thought, well, but that's you, isn't it? That's, that's, obviously, it is. The transformation of humorous comment that Jack was watching, so I'm not going to. <laughs> no, 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 just like a day of doing anything without asking your position. <laughs> so in, in the previous meetings, obviously, it's set up so. So there is, there is, um, uh, sorry, yeah, too much, right, there will be too much now. There is something about my influence on people, and that's just one example. I remember there's examples of Chris, and there's examples of, of Mary Adams, who's the learning support service, and she retired, which is great, but I've got the next guy coming in going to do some work with me, so as I can see what my influence is, is around that. What I'm interested in now is, is things around, you know, where Sean is actually talking about reflection on action and reflection in action, and it's that that minute-to-minute interaction that I'm having with people and how that works in terms of expressing my values and encouraging people and so on. So that's what I'm, I'm 